Hi guys, this is Lauren with Lauren Watkins Art, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Derwent Soft Pastel Pencils. I bought these pastels a couple of weeks ago and I've done several projects with them so that I could give them a fair review. I bought the 72 set, which is the largest set that Derwent offers. So this footage is of me opening the pastels for the first time and just getting a feel for them. And I felt like the packaging was pretty standard. It's a metal tin with two plastic trays in it that hold the pencils pretty secure so they don't wobble around and get broken. I did feel like the plastic trays were a little bit thin and a little bit more wobbly than some of the other pencils that I've bought in the past. However, I did find a good workaround for this. I just put one tray in the base container of the container and one tray in the lid that upside down. And that way I could move around those trays of pencils while I was working without worrying about breaking the plastic tray. So here is a close up of the pencil and you can see that they have the product name on the side and they have the product number. That way, if you have a color you use a lot, you can easily replace it and buy it open stock. Something interesting that I discovered about these pencils is that they are a little bit thicker than your standard pencil, um, thicker than my colored pencils and my pastel pencils. Um, I couldn't tell if the core was thicker or bigger round than my other pencils or if it was just the wood surrounding the colored core. They seemed comparable, but it can be a little tricky telling if something's thicker or not um, when it's sharpened. I think it's pretty comparable and that it might just have a thicker wood surrounding the pencil. I found that these pencils were really comfortable to hold. I liked that they were a little bit thicker and I liked that the wood protecting the core was a little bit thicker because that makes them less likely to break or be damaged from dropping and sharpening. I found while swatching the colors that the bottom color or the display color on the pencils was really similar to the color that you got when you uh, swatch the color, which is good because you want those colors to be close so that when you are reaching for a color, you can quickly grab the right one you want without having to actually test swatch it every time to make sure it's what it says it's going to be. Um, there was a few colors that maybe weren't quite as vibrant as the display color, but for the most part, it was pretty close. So I have a question for you. What is the first thing you do when you get new supplies? For me, I open them up and I look at them and I admire how pretty and perfect they look and then I swatch them. I love swatching my supplies when I first get them. I will even swatch them on multiple papers. So I have UART paper here and watercolor paper. The reason why I do this is it lets me see how, what colors I have to work with, how the colors look different on different papers, whether it is a colored paper or a toned one that I'm working on, or if it's just the texture that shows up. And it also gets me an idea of how these are going to respond and work when I go to use them. So these pastels felt different when I worked on watercolor paper versus how I worked on sanded paper. So I started off by swatching the colors and I, when I swatched them, I got an idea and a feel that some of these pastels were a little bit harder or scratchier than some of the other ones. I didn't notice it when I swatched it on the sanded paper as much as when I swatched it on the watercolor paper. Um, sanded paper has so much tooth and hold and grab to it that it's pretty forgiving if something's a little bit harder or scratchier. But I did notice it a bit on the softer papers like this cotton watercolor paper. After I got done swatching, I started just playing around on a scrap piece of paper. This is something else I typically do when I get a new supply. I see how things blend and lay down. I see how it responds. So like if it was watercolor, I'd see what happens if it's really diluted or really concentrated or in a wash. With the pastels, I see how fine of a point and how much detail I can get. I see how they blend with each other on the paper without me having to manually blend them. 
I see how light I can get the color or how dark and concentrated it will go. I see how they layer on top of each other. I just want to get an idea for how the pastels work. And what I discovered with working with these pastels and experimenting with them is that these pastels are a little bit firmer than the other soft pastel pencils I have. I would say they're pretty comparable to the Faber Castell Pit pastel pencils, but I would I think that they might be just a smidge harder, especially some of the colors that don't have as much white in them. I noticed the ones with white tended to be a little bit softer. I found that these pencils sharpened really nicely to a fine point. And this lets me know, one, they are protected in their, their wood casing and that they've been taken care of and they're a quality pencil since they're not like crumbling and falling apart. Two, it lets me know that this is a firmer core. Um, some of the softer core ones like the Caran d'Ache and some of those, you can't really sharpen them with a, a sharpener that well. You almost have to sharpen them by hand with a knife. The only breakage I had was with this yellow pencil. In just a second, you'll see a big chunk of it breaks off. Uh, with all of the pictures I've done with this so far, and I've done about four or five with using these pencils, I that's the only time I've had that kind of breakage, which is really really nice because they can be really frustrating when your pencils just crumble and you can't actually get a point. Um, I tried creating different textures on the sanded paper with them and again I could get nice fine details and I could do I could cover broad strokes by having the pencil more on the side. So it it really lends itself to different techniques using the pastel pencils and I could blend on the paper. I didn't have to always manually blend the pastels, which is nice because it can create different kinds of effects with your artwork. I particularly like these pencils on the sanded paper. And if you're not new around here, you know that I love sanded paper and I love layering them up. And you can see like I blended two different colors of blue just by layering them on top of each other to create interesting textures. And these pencils were firm enough that it didn't fill in the tooth of the paper too quickly. So I didn't have to be overly cautious about how hard I was pushing, but I could still lay down a lot of color. So I really, really liked them on the sanded paper. For my demo, um, for this review, I am doing an apple and I am doing it on cold pressed watercolor paper and the reason why I chose this is because sanded paper is a little bit more forgiving and you can get really soft blends you can hold on to a lot of layers and so with it being so forgiving I wanted to see how this responded on a paper that's a little bit trickier to work on this is Archer's cold pressed paper and it has a pretty strong texture to it I would say it's more aggressive than and bigger than some of the pastel papers and so you have to work hard to fill in the tooth of the paper you also have to blend carefully not to get if you don't want a lot of texture showing through but I'm just I sketched out an apple and I am just layering up the the base colors and I will blend them out but I'm just blocking in where the shadows are the highlights are adding a little bit of green and I'm just filling this in I'm trying not to push too hard because I don't want to indent the paper because indenting the paper could damage it and it makes it hard to add layers on top so always keep a light hand and try not to use the point too much especially early on and yes I do know I draw a lot of apples in my product review examples um, I grew up on a fruit farm and I spent a lot of time picking apples and eating apples on the back of my grandma's pickup truck um, in her orchard. And so apples are just my go-to. I think also why I like drawing apples is that you're using greens and reds and yellows, and so you can use a variety of colors in them and you can create different textures, but also shine. So, and they're not too fussy to draw. So that's why they're my go-to example. But I'm just adding another layer of pastels to see, okay, I got a base layer. I blended it out with a soft tool. Now let's start adding more layers. 
and you can see how textured this paper is. It's not smooth. You, you don't have that velvety finish that you get with sanded paper. So I really have to blend carefully so that I don't get too much texture showing through. But keep in mind, this much texture will affect how fine of detail I can get. And I will show you some other examples of pictures I did on other papers so that you can get a, a, a feel for how these work on other papers and even in conjunction with other art supplies and mediums. So let's talk about the colors available in this set. I feel like this set is pretty balanced. You get brights and neutrals of each color. You get colors in a lighter value along with colors that are in a darker value. So you get pale blue, you get some gray blues, you get some dark, almost black blues, and you get that in a lot of the colors. So I feel like it's a pretty fair distribution and it makes it so this set works if you want to do portraits or landscapes or still lives. You can, you can use this pastel set for whatever you choose to draw or paint. I feel like color-wise, this set is particularly great with the purples. So you get really vibrant purples along with neutral ones that are very gray toned. And then you get some really dark purples, which are great for shadows and, and like values when you don't want to use just pure black. So it's great with those. You get a lot of greens, including neutral greens that are great for landscape work. It has a lot of great earth tones, and then it has some really great pale blues and dark teals and turquoises. So those are the colors I really liked from the set. I felt like it had a lot of colors that were unusual or different that I hadn't seen in my other sets, particularly the darks. Most pastel pencils that I have worked with in other brands, they tend to be a little bit light and from like mid-tone to light. There's not very many darks. And I feel like it's a sign of a good set when you get those really dark concentrated colors other than just pure black. So to go back to the picture to just talk about what I've been doing, I did a base of couple layers on the apple and now I'm adding in the background and I'm just doing a blue background. There's a lot of blues in this set and I felt like they would just look really nice with the oranges in the red and I'm just did a base color of bright blue and now I'm adding some shadows and just wanting to see how it blends. One thing to keep in mind and this is just in art in general you can see where my right hand is holding my paper down and I don't have a protective paper for this artwork. It's a small piece and it's not something I'm planning on selling so I wasn't trying to protect it. But later on you can see that where my fingers were holding the paper a lot, some of that oil residue got onto that paper and it doesn't blend in on that edge very well and that's from the oils on my hand. That's why in other pastel artworks where my hand is resting on the picture I have a glassine sheet underneath my hand to make sure I'm not getting my oil, the oils of my hand on that paper because it will affect how the colors lay down and blend. I'm just doing something similar on the background that I did on the apple where I'm just blocking in color, blending it out, and just building up the uh, look I'm going for. Um, I struggled with getting a nice smooth back. I didn't mind the texture as much on the apple itself, but I did not like how much texture was showing up on the background, but I think that's more of a, pa a paper thing, not as much of a pastel thing. Though using like a traditional soft pastel, I could have just blocked it in and you wouldn't have seen as much texture. With pastel pencils, they're, I found that they're not quite as opaque as like a traditional soft pastel especially when you are trying to blend them and things like that. And so it definitely showed more texture than what I would have liked. But the dark purples were great for the shadows on the apples, and I used a lot of oranges and things like that to really build up the depth on the apple. 
So let's talk about the cost of these pencils. And remember the price does change and it does vary based off of where you live. I am located in the US and so my pr prices are based off of what is available to me. So looking on Amazon, these sell for $140 for the set of 72, which is the one I bought. That breaks down into $1.94 per pencil. On Dick Blick, which is an art website here in the US, the it sells for $107, which is about $1.49 per pencil. So that is kind of where you would what you would spend on these pencils. They're also available in open stock, which means you can buy individual pencils. So in open stock, these are about $2.07. Now let's compare that to a similar pastel pencil, and that would be Dick Blick's, or not Dick Blick's, that would be the Pit Pastels by Faber-Castell. On Amazon, they sell for $153.97 for their largest set, which is 60 pastels. That's about $2.69 per pencil. On Dick Blick, that same set sells for $138, and that is about $2.30 per pencil. So in the sets, it's a lot cheaper to get the Derwent pastel pencils. If you're going to go into open stock, that's where it starts to get a little bit more muddy. Open stock um, for the Pit Pastels are about $1.94, and they are also available with bulk pricing, which is $1.62 per, uh, per pencil if you buy 12 or more of the same color at the same time. So if you're just starting out, with your pastel pencil collection, I would really recommend buying a set of the Derwent pencils to start with. You get more pencils and it's really affordable per pencil, especially if you look around on art websites like Dick Blick. Um, some other websites might have it like uh, Cheap Joe's. Um, so just look around because you might be able to find these for a very affordable option per pencil. Um, if you already have the Pit Pastel pencils, you can buy these and supplement what you have. It will ex give you more color options. There are a few colors that are almost the exact same, but other colors are like a shade or two different, which is very handy when working with, with pastels um, so that you don't have to constantly be blending on the paper. Another option you can do is if you have the Derwent set or you're going to get it, you can supplement and buy open stock options from the Pit Pastels and get colors that you don't have or vice versa. If you have the Pit Pastels, you could buy the open stock um, pencils that are colors that you don't have and just get a few extra pencils if you don't want to have too many colors that are similar. So you don't have to always buy a com complete set to to have a workable functioning pastel set. That's part of the reason why I review these uh, art supplies for you is one, you can make sure that it's quality and two, you can make sure you're not going to be buying multiple of the same thing. So let's t pause about pricing for just a minute and talk about what's going on in the picture. So in the picture, I was having a hard time getting a soft blend on the background, particularly because it's such a textured paper, but I was also having a hard time getting some of those dark colors to lay down a, a, enough of a layer that it would be soft and it would blend in together. And the soft tools picked up too much of the pigment and it would really lighten up so I couldn't get the contrast I wanted. And I was struggling to get the opacity so you couldn't see the little whites of the texture showing through. So what I ended up doing was I ended up blending the pastels on the paper and not using any blending tools to get the soft blend. And this is different for me because usually I don't use soft pastel pencils alone. 
I usually use them with pan pastels and traditional pastels. But what I did was I laid down thick layers of color and then I used the rubber shaper to kind of smudge it in and then did more layers. What I did have to do was use the, the colors that had a little bit more white in them to fill in the tooth of the paper because those are the softer pastels in the set. And some of the really dark ones were a little bit harder and I couldn't get the color to lay down quite right. So I used the, the lighter blues to really fill in that tooth of the paper and then I used the rubber shaper to push it down. And I found that really helped smooth out the background so it wasn't as distracting and that it put more of the focus of the apple to the forefront. So would I recommend these pastels? Yeah, I would. I feel like they are high quality. They are worth the money you spent. I don't feel like they're very overpriced. I liked that they didn't break or crumble, so I didn't spend a ton of time just sharpening and wasting pastels. I really think they're a quality product. So here is the finished apple, and then I'm gonna show you some other pieces of artwork that I created using these pastels. So this is a tiny, tiny sketchbook. It's only like three inches by four inches. And this is just a quick sketch I did of a frog eye. I had like 15 minutes to do it. And I used both the Faber-Castell pencils and the Derwent ones on this. And I really couldn't tell a difference when working on sanded paper. Together, they felt the same. And so I was just picking the colors I wanted. Again, this was a really quick little one that I did, and I really liked the way they interacted and they worked really well together. So if you really like the Faber-Castell pencils and you're looking for some more similar to that, I would really recommend these pastels for that. So this next piece is one that I used only the Derwent pastel pencils on, and this is on pastel matte paper, which is a very, very fine sanded paper to work on and you can see I got a lot of detail in I got a lot of layers in and I got really great color saturation with this so that is my review of the Derwent pastel pencils if you have any questions please leave them down below and I will do my best to answer them if you like this video please hit the like button it really really helps my channel out and if you want to see more of what I create from uh, demos to more reviews please hit the subscribe button and notification bell so that you can stay up to date on all that I create. I will see you next time and I hope you have a fantastic day.